Hi guys, welcome back. Once we file a complaint with EEOC, separating us from our perpetrators is a smart practice. The employers who do it are telling us and everyone else involved that they'll do whatever they can to protect us from being harmed further. And it also tells us they're committed to a fair and unbiased investigation. NASA didn't separate me from my perpetrator boss. In fact, I had to work for her for almost two more years after I filed my complaint until I could finally retire. HR tried to separate us, but my boss wasn't having it. Unfortunately, there's no law that requires our employers to separate us. Existing laws and EEOC guidance imply they should, but employers who choose to willfully violate the law probably don't care about what the law implies. They don't have to separate us if they don't want to, but not wanting to can cost them. Failure to separate can result in a greater liability for them, which means a bigger award for us potentially. My discrimination didn't really cause me any financial pecuniary harm. In fact, if NASA had separated us right away and let me go to work for a boss who would actually let me use the reasonable accommodations they gave me on paper, I probably would have had no damages at all. But because NASA allowed my perpetrator boss to continue abusing me for almost two years after I filed my complaint, EEOC gave me the maximum non-pecuniary award. NASA's bad choice not to separate us put some extra money in my pocket. But that money wasn't free. It was compensation for some extra harm they did by not allowing me to tend to my most basic hygiene needs. They ruined my professional reputation and relationships that I'd worked years to develop exacerbated my physical symptoms and my pre-existing depression, and caused brand new PTSD. My boss mocked, accused, threatened, and humiliated me. She tried to set me up so that she could have me fired, and she overtly tried to take away any pride that I might have had as I was wrapping up my 34-year career at NASA. I can never be made whole for all that. I mean, EEOC did the best they could by giving me the max, and I appreciate that. I mean, that's all they could do. But you guys need to know, wasn't enough. So if you're in a situation like this and you can get away, please do it. But I couldn't. And if you can't either, you can at least try to take advantage of their bad choices. That takes a little bit of extra effort, but it's not too bad and it's worth it. First, if we want to hold them liable for extra damages, we have to document the fact that they knew about the extra harm and didn't take appropriate action to prevent it. The easiest way to do that is to email HR and the diversity manager and let them know the extra harm is happening and ask them outright to separate us from our alleged perpetrator pending investigation. And I'd also recommend asking how and when they plan to do that. And in that same email, we can also mention that if the separation doesn't happen, we're concerned that our investigation could be incomplete or biased. My witnesses were my peers. They saw every day how my boss treated me as a result of filing that complaint so they knew exactly how she'd treat them if they crossed her. They did everything they could to avoid that, including making up lies during their statements and testimony. It happens, and putting those things in writing can help us later on if we need to show that our investigation was, in fact, either of those things, biased or incomplete. And if we continue to document the significant and ongoing harm that they're causing, it can help us prove a retaliation claim or even a hostile work environment claim. For retaliation, we have to show a pattern of behavior that's harmful enough to dissuade a reasonable person from complaining. And for a hostile work environment claim, we have to show a pattern that's severe and pervasive enough to alter our working conditions and create an abusive working environment. So we want to keep our emails focused on those kinds of things. And wherever we can, we want to work that kind of language into them. So how do we say harmful enough to dissuade a reasonable person in real language? What's happening is in no way reasonable. Or that it's severe. Anyone in my position would be harmed by this. Or that it's pervasive. This is happening more and more frequently. Or this is happening way too frequently. Now we want to be specific about what behavior is happening and we want to tie it back to our original complaint. If we'd been separated pending investigation, this person wouldn't have the opportunity to continue harming me. If we do this stuff right, they're going to find it a lot harder to continue justifying their abuse. And they're probably not going to love us for that. But staying on their good side isn't the goal anymore. Now we just want to stay on the right side of the law. And to do that, we have to document what's happening against the legal standards that apply. 
and we have to keep it on point and professional. We should never be ashamed of letting them know our reasonable concerns and asking for their help. And every time they refuse to help or ignore our concerns, we want to make sure that gets documented. That may not make them change course, but it could make them pay for every illegal thing they ever did, (laughs) as well as the things they should have done but didn't. Money can't always fix the harm they caused, but it is the least they can do. I'll see you guys next time. Till then, take care and hang in. Bye, smart.